Today marks one year since Hurricane Ida tore through our area. The deadly storm brought extreme flooding and tornadoes, destroyed homes and businesses and cars. One neighborhood in South Jersey was particularly hard hit. Left a lot of devastation. I want to get out to Shana, who is live with the mayor of Mullica Hill this morning. Shana. Well, good morning to you both. Yes, you know, definitely night and day. I was standing here uh, the day that Mullica Hill suffered uh, this extreme devastation when it came to Ida and the tornado that hit, of course, from the remnants of that storm. I'm joined now by the mayor of this township of uh, Township of Harrison, Lou Manzo. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, considering. Good, good, good. You know, it's good to see you. It's good to see you uh, here a year later. I uh, know that it's been a rough road. Um, and it's really looking at uh, the devastation a year later is incredible because it really is still a work in progress. Talk to me about where we stand. Well, we're on Salvatore Drive, which, you know, became noted as one of the you know, ground zero points in, in Mullica Hill for the, for the tornado a year ago. And it's a neighborhood that obviously we can see was severely impacted. A year later, we still have boarded up homes and many houses under construction. And the reality is the 39 that were complete demolitions, you know, totally destroyed or had to be destroyed uh, or taken down because of the structural damage. Right. Most of them are not back into their homes yet, not back home a year later. Right. And, and, you know, and also there is an issue, of course, with so many people asking the questions of where more resources and help comes from. And we even talked about a potential misconception when it comes to, to FEMA. Mm -hmm. uh, walk me through that because there's a, there's a conception out there that FEMA just isn't helping a lot of families that say they need the help. Right. Well, FEMA does its job. I think the misconception is what the job is. And re in reality, FEMA steps in in the aftermath, the immediate aftermath of a, a disaster like this. The president gives a designation, and that opens up funding sources available for those that are either uh, severely or grossly underinsured or not insured at all. Who it really helps are government agencies like us for the dollars that we have to spend in a cleanup scenario. And so we're able to recoup up to 90% of that money, which did work, and that worked fine. But people that expect somehow an individual homeowner is going to be helped by FEMA, unless you are either underinsured or not insured at all, it's not the case. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's uh, in part why it takes a pr it's a process to get your home back. You see a lot of sure. the foundations, a lot of the home insurance, right. uh, the people that have the home insurance here told them that mm -hmm. they had to really start from ground up with the foundations. Talk to me about, uh, you know, where these families are. How are they doing? I know they're not here, but right. you're in contact with them. How are they holding? Yes, uh, you know, in contact with some more than others, and that's really up to them, but obviously we're available to provide the resources uh, that are still in existence for these individuals even a year later. Uh, I talked with, you know, one just yesterday, one of the farm owners, the Grasso family uh, farm in town, and talking about where they are, and they're telling me how it'll still be a year from now before mm -hmm. potentially you're back to where they were. And the reality is, emotionally, all of these families maybe will never be the same. And we're not even talking about that right now. It's still just about the physicality of getting back home. Right, right. And to speak to that, a lot of kids lived on Salvatore Drive. And right. to, to one day, literally right before the school year starts, still in the thick of COVID last year, remember yes. that, to have this happen, to be removed from their homes, you talk about the psychological effects of that in the families, uh, they're still picking up the pieces emotionally. Yeah, and so a year ago, you know, in the immediate, immediate aftermath, it was... It's so, it was so haphazard for these families, and within days they had to start their school year and be displaced in hotels or family and friends that were outside of town but still make it to school. And now a full year later, these kids are starting their second school year, not home yet. And so, again, I don't think um, that I can speak well to what that emotional impact because it's not my family. I know what they tell me, but I can only imagine. And that's why we are still here steadfastly one year later saying this is not over for these people. Uh, and that's really the message of today. This is not a time to look back ceremonially uh, at an event that occurred. It's more about this isn't over and we want to make sure that we continue to help those that need help. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely a process. You see the construction ongoing. You see uh, we, the construction workers for individual homes have been arriving since about the 5 o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is really an everyday process for these yeah. families to get their homes back. Yeah, and so it's funny because this is one of the newer developments in town where it was a construction site and uh, years ago and one house after another goes up. Well, <laughs> it's kind of come full circle back to that because in many of these locations, these houses are going back up from you know, the ground all the way up again. So, yeah, it's a process. For sure. All right, what is, what is your message ultimately to the families that are still displaced and what do you want them to know from the Townsend Harrison's perspective on what you guys are doing today 
and going forward is going to help them get back home. Well, as they already know, we're here for them, uh, you know, a phone call away uh, if they need anything. And we continue to be there for them. And we've done everything we can on a fiscal level, uh, and, and that was fairly minimal, to, to, be, to be honest. You know, we can waive permit fees and so forth. Every little bit helps, but it's really more about being there for them to give them access to other resources they might, that they might have and also letting them know that we're going to be here for them uh, beyond that uh, when it comes to helping them with the emotional impact of this. All right, Mayor Lou Manzo, thank you so much for joining us here on Good Day. Guys, I'll send it back to you in the studio live from Malikaville. Shana, thank you. We appreciate that, and the mayor as well. It's hard. I mean, it's been, uh, it's a year now, but it's been a long road for so many of these mm -hmm. residents, and they had to wait for the materials, materials as well. But through it all, you heard a number of the residents say we still have each other, mm -hmm. and that was that the community. greatest thing of all. And it's amazing that the community is sticking together as they work through this.